Welcome to this edition of the Million Dollar Mastermind Podcast. This is where we pick the brains of high achievers from all walks of life and get their hard-earned, real-world insights on winning. I'm your host, Larry Wydell. Hello, everybody. We're talking to Wojo. Help me with the last name so everybody will know. I, I thought I had it, but yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it's Jason Wojohowitz. Yeah, Wojohowitz, Wojohowitz. And Jason, wow, I don't usually do this, Jason, but uh, you're, you know, you're a young guy with, usually you have to go to Wikipedia, you get an older guy and you go to his Wikipedia page and find this kind of list of achievements, you know, <laughs> but you've, uh, uh, you've been featured in Entrepreneur Magazine. You've been listed in the New York Weekly 30 Under 30, ranked number seven, featured in Forbes, New York, has a net, had a net worth of $3 million by the age of 25. Uh, in LA Weekly, you're mentioned as a top 20 entrepreneur to watch out for in 2023. And uh, Yahoo Finance listed uh, you as a top 20 Instagram account. And you ha- run, uh, you know, you help People and traders have prior sales and social proof and bring about more leads and sales and help multiply what they've got going on. And so uh, uh, congratulations on your your success. Over the last three years, you've scaled 46 and seven figure businesses that still work to they're still operational. It's one thing to build them up. It's another thing to keep them running. So congratulations. People can go to Instagram and see your uh, account. You generate 100 million uh in online uh, uh, business with paid ads and uh, have over uh, 155 clients. That's a lot of people to keep up with. And so (laughs) good for you, young man, and uh, proud of you. And I told you when I saw your Instagram account, I could feel the the energy and the drive and the the boldness that, uh, you know, you project. And, uh, you know, we got to project... you know, that, that doesn't come. You don't find somebody who's lazy, who doesn't know what they're talking about and are just making stuff up or posing. You know, I'm trying to be like this guy. You know, uh, you don't find people who are posing that have that boldness, you know, talking, speaking from the heart. And that's why I love to have uh, people like yourself and especially a young guy like yourself who can come in and uh, share those kind of experiences because you've learned about what works. And I I picked up uh, a lot of that uh, from just a few of your uh, uh, posts on your Instagram account. And welcome anybody to go in and and check that out. And so uh, congratulations on a a bulldozer explosive start to your career. It's going to be fun seeing talking to you five, 10 years out from now, which hopefully we'll get a chance to do. But uh, you know, you know, you got a traje- you got a real positive trajectory, and I want to congratulate you on that. And uh, let's talk about what you've learned about winning. And uh, uh, I've, I've given people a little bit uh, of an idea of what you've accomplished and where you are. Uh, where did where did this dynamic start? You know what where what what are the seeds of 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 uh, this kind of drive, insight, curiosity? that led you to where you are today? How early on did you realize there was something bubbling inside of you you wanted to do something big and something special? Yeah, I think it was when I was at an early age, um, when I was very, very young, probably about 14, 15 years old. um, And I was working in a local cafe in my area in New York. And um, I just realized that like working for somebody else, I didn't have the right like flexibility, the right time, just the right like creativity to speak my mind on things that I wanted to do and achieve. And while I was working at that job, I was, you know, getting paid five bucks an hour under the table. It was nothing insane. And I was like, all right, well, like, is this all there is to life? Like, do I just do this for the next five, 10 years and just like get a paycheck? And um, my boss was like, hey, go to culinary school. And I was like, all right, like, I might as well go to culinary school because I don't know anything about anything else. Like, I had no self awareness. Right. And that also steps in the fact that my parents didn't make much money. So like if we went shopping for stuff like $3 for a pizza or like a difference in a pizza being a medium and a large, like that was a big thing for us. Like just spending an extra couple of bucks or like the difference between a $60 pair of sneakers and an $80 pair of sneakers. 
like it just didn't work out the way that I wanted it. And also, um, just one thing that I always realized is when my parents would come home, they would be like, oh, like our boss doesn't listen to us. Like they don't care about our opinion. You know, we're just working for them. We're making them all this money. They don't care. And one thing always stuck in my head was people don't listen to you if you don't make a lot of money. And that was this like this belief that stuck in my head. I was like, all right, well, I was a skinny teenager in high school going into college. Like no one listened to me. But everybody listened to the kid who had the popular dad, who ran the local business down the street, who had the big house because he hosted all the parties in the basement. Like that was who people listened to. But now with me, I was like, oh, no one listened to me because I'm broke and I'm skinny and I'm short. So how do I get people to listen to me? I was like, well, I have to get rich. Like no one's going to care. And that's what like stemmed the winning. And I was like, unless I make money, no one's going to listen to what I have to say because there's no proof behind it, right? There's no, there's no like validity. It's just like, if you want to win and you're mad you're not winning, it's because no one's listening to you and you're aggravated about it. Because that's why you're at a job because you decided to listen to somebody else. No one listens to you. You're just given the, the tools and the tasks to do what you're going to do. And then you go home and there's no passion behind it. It's just like, oh, I did whatever my boss told me to do today. And right. um, being able to have your voice heard was important to me because of creativity reasons. Now, you've, you've mentioned nobody would listen, listen to you or pay any attention to you. From a, a young age, it was important to you that you got noticed. Oh, yeah. Because I knew that I was smart. Like, I knew that I had this creativity because when I was in culinary school, just to kind of conclude on that, I was, you know, like very rebellious. Like I knew I didn't like school. Like I was just partying all the time. I was playing video games. I didn't do anything in school. Like I barely went to class. And one day it was snowing in school and I had to go outside and shovel the snow. And I go to the back trunk and there's this box of Pokemon cards. And I was like, oh, like I used to love Pokemon cards. I used to be a kid. And I took these cards out and I started flipping them on eBay like in my dorm room, I refused to go to class. I was like, all right, if I make seven bucks here, five bucks here, 10 bucks here on Pokemon cards, like that's satisfying to me. And I yeah. did that for about three months and I saved like maybe like three, four grand. It was so cool. Like, and after that was up, I decided to call my parents and I dropped out of culinary school. And then I went to business school instead because I saw that I was savvy with like numbers and flipping things. I was like, all right, like I'm not going to be good in the kitchen. Like I need to do something where I can control like my freedom. Because dude, I was going from CVS to Target to Walmart, buying the cards, getting back in the car, opening up all the packs. If I got a good card, I would take a picture, put it on eBay, run to the post office, sell it, buy them very quickly. Dude, these cards would sell in 30 minutes. And then I would run to the post office, get the, like, get the thing packed up and sent. And then I was off to Walmart again. I took the profit, ran to Walmart, bought more packs. Like I used to go around the entire area and I would sell them out every week. They used to get so pissed because when I would walk in, they were like, dude, we don't have any more pack sheet bottom line. And I was like, I'm sorry, but like I'm doing this. Like I had to go from multiple stores back and forth. And I just think that I think I was just more willing to bet on myself because I was like, hey, like even if I work 14 hours a day, I'm just more satisfied doing this than being in a classroom than sitting in a desk. Like this is it for me. Like I'm excited about it. And yeah, like even working, yeah, like even working a job for six, seven hours, that wasn't enticing. Like yeah. it just wasn't. And I was like, all right, well, yeah. I want to control my income. I want to control my destiny. I got to make money on my own. Well, the with me, I specifically re remember, and I lived out in the Hamptons at the time. Uh, I was seventeen, and I'd worked in you know in the summer jobs. You know, it's hasty freeze. You know, I worked in a restaurants, and I worked out of the the hero. Uh, 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 place with a 500 degree oven in the hot sun <laughs> along the side of the highway with all the people coming out from New York City. <laughs> and, you know, you're making, making minimum wage. But it, what, what it also dawned to me was the lower the income, the less respect you get. You get treated in a, like dirt and you get more ignored. And it's like, you know, in that time, you know, when I, I hear that you did, you know, your your instinct spoke and you responded. Because the thing what spoke to me was, I don't even know what I'm saying right now, but I'm going to do whatever it takes. College, this, that, the other. I'm going to figure out 
where I can get in a whatever situation I get into, company, occupation, whatever, I'm going to be in the top half. I'm going to be in the top group because the people in the bottom not only don't get paid anything, they get treated like dirt. And so it's interesting that you had that thing at, at 14 years old. You know, the light bulbs were 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 turning on for you. And as you uh, went through business school, what did you notice about that? I think when I was in business school, I noticed that all my teachers never ran a business. And I was like, what is going on right now? And that was right, like right. where I started getting very like that was where you talk about in the beginning about the curiosity. That was my curiosity was like, OK, well, if my teachers don't run a business, where can I find one? And that's what I went online. I started searching for like just business advice. And that's what I found videos of like Gary Vaynerchuk. And I found Ty Lopez's course and I bought that. And like I started diving into from people that I wanted to learn from because like, you know, like uh, like there was a professor at my school who worked at Xerox, which is a printing company. And he's like, yeah, you know, I control the supply chain. I'm like, you don't own it, though. Like what, what is going on? Like I'm paying all this money to go to school. You don't own it. You don't, you're not like a leader. You don't control anything. Like they could fire you tomorrow. It's like, yeah, but I know like how people and supply works. And I'm like, that's not all a business is, man. Like, and and that's where I just started to drift away from school and get rebellious again. Like I used to challenge my parents about, and I was like, oh, like this is so stupid. I want out. Like, can we just not do this? And they were always like, oh, well, like, because I had a ride because I played tennis. So like, I didn't really have to pay much. So I was like, all right, like I'll just like go, I'll play tennis, I'll get my education and then I'll go do my own thing. But like, yeah. it was it was just tough because like my dad was so into school. My dad was um, a lab scientist for uh, Pfizer and like, he didn't even make a lot of money. They would work him 11 hours a day. He would work home and be so pissed and make 80 grand a year. Like that's not, and my mom didn't even work. So like we were making less than six figures a year and like 80 grand a year for anybody who's listening, like that's not enough to really live. Like you can barely do anything with that. So it's like, and that's what I started to see like my dad getting mad every Friday, sitting down eating dinner and you'd get pissed at like all the bills in the mail. I remember those days. Like you didn't want to sit next to him and eat because you just felt like he was going to like throw the mail at you because he was just that mad. And those things always said when I was a kid. I always wanted to get to that point where I was like, hey, like, I don't care about a $20 bill for overcharging the phone bill or like 80 bucks in electricity or whatever it was. Like, I don't want to care about stuff like that. I was just like, why let a piece of paper stress you out that much? So that was really where a lot of the stuff came from. For those of you who are sick and tired of fooling around and are dead serious about wanting to move up fast, I've got something especially for you. I've combined the best insights from over 40 years in business and making $70 million in income and compress them into a free webinar. That's right. It's a free resource. If you want to find out exactly what the concepts are that I use in coaching million dollar earners, register now at widelonwinning.com. You'll discover the five part framework used by so many to reach their financial, personal and professional goals. You can find that link in this episode's show notes. So where did you uh, take your first stab out at making your mark in the uh, the world on your own? Yeah. So when I was done with college, well, not done with college, but about a year before, I was going through Ty Lopez's course. And I started like cold approaching local businesses. I was going to local businesses and I was like, hey, I'll manage your social media. I'll record videos for you. I'll take pictures. Um, I saved up some money at the time and I bought like this, maybe like it was like a cheaper Canon, but it was a nice Canon camera. And, um, you know, I was taking pictures, shooting video, all this stuff. And I was offering them like packages, like 300 bucks a month. Like I was really like eating shit to learn and like trying to figure out where I standed. And I was like, maybe had like 10 clients. I, I door to door knocked for probably four weeks and I had a 3K a month business. And the funny thing is, is like, I bring this up. I was talking to my friend last night and he's like, dude, like how do people not understand that making money is a lot easier than it looks? And I'm like, dude, if I was starting from zero right now and I lived in a big city, I would just get me and my best friend and I would door knock 50 businesses a day and you would close two of them each and you would have four clients a day. Like you would be able to do it. 
the problem is, is that they just don't do it because they're lazy or they don't believe in themselves. And that's really like it. And it's like, it's not that hard. And when I was done with that, I saved up some money, maybe like seven, eight grand. And my dad comes to me, he's like, yo, you're about to finish school. You got to get out or you're paying us 600 bucks a month. And I was like, well, I mean, I'm going to be honest, man. Like I could afford it barely, but like, I'm just not, because I had other expenses too. Like I had other debt to pay off and stuff like that. So, you know, plus being a 1099 worker, I had to pay taxes on that three grand a month. You know, I, I didn't understand like S Corp and all that stuff yet. I was still getting taxed like a sole prop. So I, I basically was like, hey, like I, I could afford it, but I'd rather go try to find somewhere where I would live that was around the same price that was sunny because I hated the weather in New York. It was so freaking cold. I couldn't stand it. So <laughs> like and that's when I went on Facebook Marketplace and I found a room in a college house. And it was like seven fifty a month. And I was like, damn, that's so much. I'm like, can I really do this? And I called the guy, his name was Steve, and we're still friends at this very day. I FaceTime him and I'm like, dude, like, I need this place. Like, can you shoot me a FaceTime so I can see what it looks like? And he's like, yeah, we got two dogs, beautiful backyard. Like, it was a really nice house. And he was like, yeah, you know, we're all in college. Because they were doing like PhDs and stuff. They were in college longer than me because I was just doing a bachelor's. So they were going for the full-fledged med school thing. So... I was like, all right, like, is there like noise hours? Like, are you guys okay? He's like, yeah, we still have fun. Like we do drinking games. We have fun. Like, yeah, we're in college. And I was like, all right, like, that's cool. I still get to keep like some of my youthfulness by living here. So dude, I then mowed him 750 and I moved the next day. Like I dead ass just picked my stuff up, got it in my, like at the time I had this like beat up Mazda and I put all the stuff in there. And I drove down four o'clock in the morning. I literally woke up and I was like, mom, dad, I'm out. Like I'm going to Orlando. And they were like, what wow. do you mean you're going? I, wow. I was like, yeah, I, I paid $750. Like, I'm going to Orlando. And they didn't believe it for an hour. So, like, I set my alarm for 3.30 a.m. And I'm like, shit, I got to wake up my parents. So I wake them up and I'm like, yo, I'm leaving. And they're like, where are you going? And I'm like, I'm moving to Orlando. So I scared the hell out of them. It was the funniest day. But, like, the one thing I'll never forget is when I was driving. I'm on a, I'm on a 16-hour car ride right? The amount of adrenaline, like, I don't know if anybody's ever been in a situation who's listening to this that like, has ever like maybe got in a fight or like maybe got a really big adrenaline rush. But like when you're driving behind the wheel, and you know that you're about to start like a real life, like dude, my veins were yeah. popping out of my arms. It was nuts. Like yeah. I didn't take a break unless I had to go to the bathroom. Like I didn't even eat. I was so focused on getting to Orlando that the amount of energy and adrenaline was just kicking in. Like I went nonstop. I got there at about 12.05 the next morning, like 12.05 a.m., 12.10 a.m. I just made it at midnight. And I did it with no hotel stops, like one fast food stop and like a couple bathroom breaks. And I just went for, I just gunned it. And it was nuts. And um, the next morning I wake up and dude, it's so weird, like living in the same house for the longest time of my life. I didn't know anything about the area. So like, right. this is funny. So I get there and I had like the crappiest phone plan ever. It was like five megabytes a month. No, five, five gigabytes a month, which is not a lot. And I used it all on Google Maps driving down there. So I get to Orlando and I'm trying to find the grocery store, like all of this shit. And I had no data. So then I call the phone company. They're like, yeah, it's an extra 80 bucks a month. And I was like, damn, that's a lot too. And I start like freaking the hell out. And... It was just so funny. Like I had so many money blocks, but I was just like excited about, you know, starting my life. And dude, having all those bills and having all the accountability, like I like my rent now and groceries, like my mom didn't cook for me anymore. Like, what the hell do I do? So that all really pushed me to be like a lot better at just like being more independent. And it forced me to grow. It forced me to be more mature and like look at things through a different lens. And that's where like, I had no backup plan. Like my dad was letting me move back in because when I left, oh, they were furious. They were so pissed. They're like, you didn't tell us all this stuff. Like, you know, if you're going to come back, we're going to charge you more. And I'm like, bro, that's not how parents should be, first of all. Um, and that, yeah, like that was it. And then I just started building the agency. And within three months, I had my first $10,000 a month. And then we just kept scaling and scaling and scaling. I kept growing. And then like, dude, five years later, now we're here. And it was, it was just an interesting time in my life. And I learned so much by just going out on my own and putting my back against the wall. And now you've, you've, 
you flip down to Tampa, right? Is that yeah, where you're based out of Tampa? yeah? We're in we're in St. Pete, so yeah. it's like a subsector of Tampa. But yeah, it's it's, it's right. a nice area. Not bad. Very nice area. And so the the thing is that strikes me about your what you've told me is, you know, as entrepreneurs, it's a it's a only the lonely type uh, life. So much of it, you know, you hear the people that have partners or they've got a spouse and they're, you know, they do everything together. But most of the time you're in there and it's like, it's just me. Well, <laughs> but you, you threw yourself into it and you're driving down there, not have, you know, no scouting trips, uh, no careful planning. You know, it's like, okay, they told me to get out. I'm out. And <laughs> I'm going to go someplace where it's warm and uh, uh, start to take, take control of your life. And so as you got down there, let me ask you this. Was the weather uh, better in Orlando? Hell yeah. Yeah. <laughs> like I literally drove down there and the first thing I do, I get out the car and I'm like, damn, I had a sweat on and, and like a sweat pants and yeah. I hop out the car and I smell it because like, Dude, the other thing too about like kind of being broke was I didn't turn the AC on the whole time in the car. Like I didn't want to waste all the gas. Like, dude, I was still a broke-minded person. I was yeah. like, I don't have to keep stopping for gas. I'm using all this AC. Like, let me just like put the windows open and shit. So I just put the windows open. And um, like I get out the car and I'm like, damn, the first impression, I have body odor. This is bad. So like I'm outside the house and I'm like, dude, this is so bad. I'm smelling myself and I'm like, they didn't notice though. I was like, all right, where's the room? And I took a shower right away. I was like, oh, it's so bad. But like, dude, I was, I was a very like, I guess you could say like a very like taken back child. Like I was very like introverted. I didn't do all the social, like uh, it was tough for me, but that house was the best year and a half of my life being innocent and having fun and just like Tapping into things that I didn't have the freedom to do when I was a kid. Like when I was a kid, I had curfews or I couldn't see friends on certain times because, you know, my mom had to get her hair done and all this stupid stuff that my parents do on the weekend or whatever. Like, oh, we don't have a car right now. You can't go anywhere. Now I was like, yo, I get to go wherever I want, when I want, how I want. I get to say whatever I want. Like, this is crazy. So I never got those freedoms. Like it was, it was like a really good, like breath of fresh air, like eating the things that I wanted. Like, dude, there'd be times where we'd go out to eat and my mom was like, no, you've had a cheeseburger three days in a row. You're not getting another one. And I'm like, what? And like, just things like that. I was like, just let me eat what I want to eat. Like, what is wrong with you? So just things like that. I had the freedom to do whatever I wanted. Now, how did you, you know, in your mind, uh, driving down in the car, you know, you're a monomaniac on a mission, <laughs> which I think it sounds like you've lived your life a lot like that. And uh, you're, you know, you, you, you got your destination in, in mind. You're headed down there like a bullet. And uh, as you're thinking, were you strategizing in your mind about what you're going to do when you get there? And when did you get to the point that where you started thinking about, OK, this is what I'm going to do now? You know, and, uh, you know, and some maybe some activities, specific activities came to you. And, uh, uh, you know, how hard was it to get operational into a pattern of where yeah. you could, you know, because that phrase, I. I've started saying this on here uh, occasionally, it's like where on an instinctive ba uh, basis, on a daily basis, you instinctively know. Uh, uh, if you're doing enough of the right things to get ahead, you know, you get in that flow, that workflow. And yeah. how, how long did it take you to kind of get your feet on the ground, meet the people in the room, get somewhat comfortable with that, the lay of the town and launch, you know, you get, get, get on some kind of schedule. Yeah. So for the first like three weeks, I'm not going to lie, I completely did zero work. Like I was just excited about being in a new city and I just explored. Like I was just like, hey, like I already had some of my clients like, I had them on scheduled posting. So it was automated for a couple weeks. I did that on purpose because I was like, like the first couple of days, I just did a bunch of work the first couple of days, got all the clients scheduled for a couple of weeks. And I was like, all right, let's go explore Orlando. So I went to like Disney Springs and all these like the amusement parks and like I did all that stuff. And I was like, oh my God, like there's nothing like this in New York. This is crazy. 
And um, <laughs> it was nuts. And uh, as far as getting operational, after those three weeks, I like got my shit together because something happened in my car. And like one of the rotors went. And like, if you don't know what a rotor is, it's like the same with a, uh, it's basically on the back of a brake. Dude, the thing was like $300. And when I got my first ever mechanic bill, I almost like freaked out. And that's when I was like, oh shit, I got to like step up my game because what if this happens to the other three rotors on my car? So yeah, that's where I was like, all right, you know, I, I need my car, obviously. So that's when I started doing the whole um, like 100 a day. And like, dude, people who are listening are definitely going to resonate with this. But if they haven't gone off the ground yet, they're going to love this. So like, if you just do 100 of something a day, like you're bound to get results that you want. So like what I did was I would do 50 cold Instagram messages a day and 50 cold calls a day. So I would pull up a list on Yelp of all the local businesses and I would just call 50 of them and set appointments. And then the other 50 were just messages. And like at the time, I was posting videos online of my journey and I was getting a good following. I had like 40,000 followers at the time. It wasn't crazy, but like it was a good audience. And I used that when I cold DM people, I got a lot of high reply rates because of that. The reply rates were very high because I had 40,000 followers and like I was able to send appointments a lot easier. The thing too was I was so motivated. I was posting content like at least twice a day. I was posting a video of me talking and then like a picture. Um, I had my Canon camera still. So I'd put it on the tripod and I would just like, I would put a timer on and I would just like go run outside and take a picture. It was so funny. Um, like all my roommates would make fun of me for it, but I would like put the Canon camera down and like sit on the couch with my laptop and like set the set the, the, the timer to five seconds. I would run over and like fucking take a picture. It was so funny. And um, like, dude, just putting out all the content and doing a hundred of something a day, it just made me a lot faster. Like it just helped me out. And then once I made about six, seven grand a month, that's when I took about a thousand bucks a month and I made my first hire, which was a VA. And I found a VA who was willing to do like cold outreach for me. So she got my Instagram and she would do the same thing every day for me, 50 messages a day. And then I was like, wait a second. I remember her name at the time, she wasn't working anymore. I was like, I was like, Dyla, I was like, why don't we do Facebook too? Like we could do Instagram messages and Facebook and do a hundred messages a day. And then she brought up a good idea. She was like, oh my God, you could do LinkedIn too. And I was like, oh my God, we could do LinkedIn too. Like, let's do 150 a day. And then I gave her a little bit more money to do that because then she didn't understand that workload. Like, it was actually a lot of messages. And dude, 150 messages a day got us about four to five book calls a day. And I was closing deals. And that was it. Thanks for listening to The Million Dollar Mastermind. If you felt there were any valuable takeaways from this episode, please take a minute and leave us a five-star review. Your feedback is important and really helps us get the word out to a wider audience. Remember, we have a valuable webinar that is absolutely free. Register for it right now at whitealamwinning.com. Thanks for listening.